When you think about it, the Nintendo DS was a very weird idea when it was first revealed. It was a Game Boy, but with a second screen on top. Huh? But you know what? It was one of the best ideas ever, as both the DS and 3DS are some of the most solid pieces of hardware ever created by a company. The Nintendo DS started off alone, but soon a family of system was born with the arrival of the Nintendo DS Lite, the Nintendo DSi, and the DSi XL. It's a thick boy. I have to admit I haven't played the Nintendo DS as much as other game consoles, but I still want to talk about my 10 favorite games out for it. Hey, I'm Nico, and here's my top 10 Nintendo DS games. Here we go. You know, having two screens on one console is pretty cool, but the fact that one of those screens was actually a touch screen was something incredible and new back in the days. And thanks to that touch screen, one of the dumbest games ever was created, WarioWare Touched. If you are unfamiliar with the WarioWare series, it is a really weird micro game compilation. Most of the games here take about 3 to 4 seconds to complete, and actually figuring out what to do in such a tiny amount of time is part of the fun for this game. This version of WarioWare makes great use of the touch screen, as you'll need it for pretty much every single micro game. The DS stylus will be used to spin a radio button, make a swimmer swim faster, move clock hands around, chisel a statue, and so much more. This game doesn't take itself seriously, and that is a great thing. I actually kinda wish a new WarioWare game is in the works right now for the Nintendo Switch, cause I'd be so down for that. Every single game console has a version of Tetris to play, and the Nintendo DS is no exception. But wait, wait, wait! Tetris DS is a love letter to Nintendo fans, as instead of being a simple Tetris game, it truly is a Nintendo Tetris game. While you're playing Tetris on the bottom screen, the top screen will feature many classic Nintendo characters, like Mario, Samus, Balloon Fighter, Duck Hunt Dog, Excitebike, and so much more. I know the core gameplay of Tetris remains the same, but knowing that every time you actually clear a Tetris, while well, Mario moves faster in the top screen, is something I really enjoy. Of course, there are many more game modes available to play, like a versus mode, a game mode where you need to fill a square with Tetris blocks, another mode where you have to clear objectives and challenges, and a Yoshi's Cookie type of mode that truly doesn't make any sense, and of course the obligatory touchscreen Tetris game mode. Yeah, this one is okay, I guess. This game is actually full of content and truly deserves a spot on this list. In my top 10 3DS game list, I haven't put a single Pokemon game, and some of you guys were mad about that, and you know what? I know I'm gonna get even more hate for what I'm about to say here. I am not a fan of the newer Pokemon games. That's it, I said it. You can call me a Gen 1-er for all I care. I just have a bigger attachment to the older Pokemons, the older towns, badges and gym leaders. And this is why I decided to put Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver on this list instead of Diamond Pearl or Black or White. The Johto region is by far the one I have the most memories of playing, and the Gen 2 Pokemon are some of my favorite ones too. Obviously, beating all of the gym leaders in Johto is a fun thing, but once you beat the game, you get to go back to Kanto, the first region from Gen 1, and visit it again. Which is obviously why this game is the greatest Pokemon game of all time! I remember revisiting all of the previous cities from Pokemon Red and Blue and discovering how they change over the years and completely being mind blown by that. Ah, just talking about it gives me the chills. I love this game so much. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto on a Nintendo platform. <laughs> now this is something you won't hear often. And the truth is, right now there's only one GTA game that can be played on Nintendo and it's GTA Chinatown Wars on Nintendo DS. 
This game ditched the 3D game world environments of games like GTA 3, Vice City, and instead went back to the classic top-down perspective of the first GTA game. While the gameplay is more similar to this first game, the story, dialogues and missions are much more similar to newer GTA games, being super original and that is a great thing. You'll have a blast completing all of the story missions, but this is GTA, so of course it's always fun to cause mayhem and start stealing cars and running over pedestrians. You'll be running, shooting, driving cars, driving boats and other vehicles, and of course running away from the police. Don't get fooled by its looks, it truly is an amazing GTA game. There are two types of Metroid games, the 2D side-scrolling ones and the Prime series. And if you asked me back in the days to try to guess which one would come out for this little DS handheld thingy, I sure wouldn't have picked the full 3D game, but this is what Metroid Prime Hunters is all about. Look, the game actually starts off with some epic cutscenes that look like this, so you know this is going to be one heck of a ride. Hunters bring back everything you know about the Prime series. Big environments to explore, cool enemies to defeat, lots of hidden power-ups and epic boss fights. You'll be fighting other hunters in this game, each with their own sets of skills and abilities. And all of those hunters are actually playable in a multiplayer mode via local or online. And it features voice chat. Yes, voice chat on a Nintendo platform without using a dumb phone app was a thing that was possible back in 2006. <sighs> What happened, Nintendo? The controls will make use of the DS Touch screen, as this is what you'll be using to look around and aim, and it works like a charm. Seriously, Nintendo actually nailed it. This only gets me more excited for Metroid Prime 4. <sighs> when does it come out? <laughs> I really love The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker on GameCube, and after beating that game, I was looking forward to a sequel of some sort to show me what would happen next in their story. And this is what The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass is here to tell. This one is a direct sequel to Wind Waker, once again featuring trips through the Great Sea in your new boat. But while this part of the game is in 3D, as soon as you enter a ship or land on an island, the gameplay switches to the classic top-down perspective of older Zelda games. Plus, if you were expecting to use the D-pad to move Link around, forget about it. Phantom Hourglass is built around the DS's touch screen, as you'll be using it to move around, to attack enemies, and even to use classic items like the boomerang. It takes time getting used to this new control scheme, but once you figure it out, it is amazing. There's also a sequel to this game out for the DS called Spirit Tracks, which is super fun too, but for me, Phantom Hourglass is way better. You know your system is gonna be epic when you launch it with a remake of one of the best games of all time. Super Mario 64 DS was the biggest Nintendo DS launch title, and it truly is epic. Not only is it a remake of Mario 64, featuring amazing graphics, sexier character models, and 30 brand new stars, but it is also a reimagined version of it too. Not only do you play as Mario this time around, but you also get to play as my boy Lugi, my friend Yoshi, and Wario. All of those characters have different power-ups and abilities, and you'll need to be using them all if you want to make it far in your adventure. This game contains all of the original levels and stars you're used to, but it introduces new worlds, new bosses, and new stars to collect. Sure, the controls take time getting used to, as playing a 3D Mario game with a D-pad isn't as precise as a control stick, but you'll figure it out and have the time of your life nonetheless. <laughs> The Mario & Luigi game series is pretty cool, and I think that Partners in Time is one of the greatest of them all. In this game, you'll be controlling Mario & Luigi, of course, but you'll soon meet the baby version of themselves. And you cannot leave those little guys alone, or else they will start crying. Having those babies will lead to amazing puzzle-solving opportunities and great use of the two screens of the Nintendo DS, having one screen featuring Mario and Luigi and the other one featuring the babies as you'll be working along to collect power-ups and open locked doors. The turn-based battle system of Superstar Saga is back, and now that you are fighting alongside the babies, the new moves you can do are even crazier. 
Of course, the babies are not helpless and can fight some battles on their own too, which is kinda cool. With four characters and four main buttons on the DS, every character has his assigned button to move, and this is pretty cool, not gonna lie. <laughs> Before it turned into a game series, New Super Mario Bros. was originally just a simple game that was meant to bring back the classic 2D Mario formula that was long gone. And New Super Mario Bros. did it right, featuring classic power-ups like the Mushroom and the Fire Flower, but introducing new ones such as the Mini and Mega Mushroom, which turns Mario into a tiny version that can enter secret pipes or a huge Godzilla-sized monster that breaks everything in its path. This game contains 8 worlds with tons of cool levels featuring all sorts of gimmicks to beat them. Some new mechanics were also introduced to this game, such as the ability to wall jump, which is mandatory in some levels, and the ground pound ability to break blocks with your Mario butt. This game is still super fun to play nowadays, and especially to play without pressing left or without touching a single coin. Not that I'm trying to plug my other videos guys, but I mean, check them out, they're pretty good. I promise, smash like. <laughs> Alright guys, this is my own Nintendo DS, the red one here. And why is it red? Because it came bundled with Mario Kart DS, and that game is the sole reason I own a DS today. Mario Kart DS is one of my favorite games of all time, as it's one of the most solid entries in the series. The 3D graphics were some of the best for its time, and the track selection is just amazing. Not to mention the fact that it came bundled with a bunch of amazing retro tracks from the SNES, N64, Game Boy, and GameCube games. It also features all of the epic power-ups you love. From the banana peels to the shells, it is the first game to introduce the blooper, which became a staple of the series in newer games. Mario Kart DS features a mission mode where you have certain objectives to complete and even bosses to defeat, which is something we sadly haven't seen more of in newer games. It is also the first Nintendo game that I played online, and keep in mind that I got this game in 2005, okay? A year where we didn't have Wi-Fi available everywhere. I remember having to bike to my local Pizza Hut joint as a kid because it was the closest place in my city that had Wi-Fi for free, and I would just chill sitting on the concrete playing some laggy Mario Kart while people around me were eating pizza. Ugh. Dude, it was such a good time, and this is why this game is my favorite DS game. Thanks a lot for watching this video gamers, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to subscribe and to hit the bell to know when I post a new one. If you enjoyed my content and would like to support me, make sure to join Team BBQ, best team in the world, by tapping this big join button or clicking the link in the description. You'll also get your name in the credits like those amazing members. Thank you so much. Alright my dudes, tap the cards for more content and I'll see you in the next one.